Miami Heat and Philadelphia 76ers are set to tip off in just two days to decide who plays the New York Knicks in the first round of the playoffs. In today's show, we are going to look at some injury updates on Terry Rozier, Duncan Robinson, and Kevin Love. Plus, I have four things Miami must do if they want to beat the Sixers on Wednesday in Philadelphia to be the seventh seed and play New York in the first round. Before we do that, though, don't jinx it. We need the good vibes in the air. Do you want the Heat to beat the Sixers in the first round of the play-in to play New York in the 2-7 matchup? If you do, hit that thumbs up icon. I'm hitting the like button. You should too because if we lose and I find out you didn't like the video, I'm going to come to your houses and bang down that front door. All right, let's move to Barry Jackson, who had a little note, not a complete update on the heat injury news. He actually tells us when the updates are going to come. Heat not practicing today. Terry Rozier getting more tests done on neck with cautious optimism there. More clarity will happen tomorrow on Tuesday, likely on Rozier, Love, and Duncan Robinson. Now, I know Barry did not give us a full update. Miami did not give us a real update either. He kind of just alluded to the fact we'll know more on those three injuries tomorrow, but I do expect them to all play, especially Terry Rozier and Duncan Robinson. Maybe I'm reading into the tea leaves a little too much here, but Rozier was a game-time decision last Friday against the Raptors. They did rule him out a little bit earlier on Sunday, the day before, but if he was a game-time decision last Friday, then I would expect him to be able to play on Wednesday. It was just cautious that they took him out on Sunday. Now, Duncan Robinson was also questionable for the final game of the regular season against the Raptors, which leads me to believe... He will be ready to go on Wednesday. Now, Kevin loves a different story because he did leave the game against the Raptors on Sunday with that stinger in his left arm, but I am hoping he will be able to go. If not, well, hell, we might just have to play BAM 48 minutes because uh, Thomas Bryant in a must-win game against Joel Embiid and Mo Bamba, not really what I want to see if you're asking me. But this sparks a larger question of who is going to be the rotation and starting five for Miami in this playoff game type game. And I have a rotation that is my personal rotation. It's not what I think Eric Spolster will do. It is what I think I would do if I was coaching the Miami Heat. And I don't think they would go more than 10 deep because, well, playoff rotation shrinking and 10 deep in the postseason is even a little bit big for Spo. He usually goes eight or nine, but I'll go 10 here. I think I would start Terry and Tyler together. I know those two haven't worked in tandem as the starting backcourt in a very long time due to injuries, but I'm starting those two because they're your two best guards. Hero's been fantastic in the four games since returning from injury. I'm starting Tyler. Jimmy, Bam, and Jovic, your front court, who has been the starting front court for the past two and a half months, I'm keeping that. But here's the bench I'm rolling with. Caleb Martin is that first guy off the bench, that super uh, starter, if you will, the sixth man wing. Duncan Robinson's in my bench. Kevin Love is the backup center. I'm starting Haywood High, or not starting, but having Haywood Highsmith in the rotation for his three-point shooting that he's provided over the past two weeks and his defense that is very, very elite. And then that 10th guy... Oh yeah, I am going with DeLon Wright, which we will explain more about that decision in a little bit. But I'm just going to come out and face the music right now, folks. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. In this game against the Sixers, I'm not going to Triple J. I'm not playing Jaime Jaquez Jr. off the bench. To me, Triple J has been fantastic all year long for Miami. But when you look at this matchup where the Heat have a lot of issues and matchups with their wings and their guards on the Sixers roster, you're going to need a more athletic group, a more diverse group in terms of defense, and a group that can really space the floor on the offensive end. And when you simply look at some of the guys on this bench that are wings, Highsmith, Caleb Martin, Duncan Robinson, they're all better than Jaime, at least at shooting in one aspect, or defense. And in Caleb Martin and Haywood Highsmith's case, they're better actually in 
both areas. They're both better shooters, and they're both better defenders. And I know he's been fantastic this year, but as that 10th spot in this rotation, I'm giving it to Dudelon Wright rather than Jaime Jaquez Jr. You can come at me in the comment sections if you want, but I'm rolling with Dudelon Wright to slow down Maxi, which we'll talk more in depth about in just a second. But let me know your thoughts. Do you disagree with me? Should Jaime Jaquez Jr. play versus the Philadelphia 76ers on Wednesday night? If you believe he should, type your Y if you think that I'm right and he should remain on the bench, type your ends. This is also me not saying, by the way, that I wouldn't play him in the playoffs at all. It's just specific for this matchup because I think Miami needs a little bit extra defense in that guard department. But here are now four things that the Heat must do if they want to win this game against Philadelphia. Number one, Jimmy Butler's usage percentage has to increase. And this is a great number and statistic from Simon Smith. So I appreciate him for sharing this with us on the Bird app. Jimmy Butler, after the All-Star break this regular season, was fifth on the Miami Heat in usage rate at 22.7%. That is really low for someone that is looked at as a top 15, top 10 player in the NBA, and the number one option on a team. The reason why these guys are called number one options is because, well, their usage rate is the highest on their respective team. You see that with a Devin Booker. You see that with Luka. You see that with SGA. You see that with these star players, right? But Jimmy was fifth on the team. And there is a magic number for Jimmy in Miami. It's 30% usage rate because in the 23 postseason, the Heat were 8-2 when he had a usage rate of 30%. That's when they made the NBA Finals, right? And then this year, when he had a usage rate of above 30% or more, the Heat actually posted a record of 7-1. and one. So the magic number for the Heat and Jimmy Butler is to get him super involved in the offense, have him making crisp decisions, whether it be getting to the rim, drawing a crowd and kicking out, getting to the free throw line, or scoring at the rim. When he has a usage percentage of 30% or more, well, the Miami Heat usually win the majority of their basketball games. More to get to in just a bit, including a very fun quote from Jimmy Butler. But we are sponsored by Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America. And as the NBA regular season concluded, you have to get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks as the world's best players take the game to a new level during the basketball postseason. The play in begin tomorrow, April 16th with 17th and 19th games as well, and then the actual playoffs begin on April 20th. Join over 3 million users. All you do is pick more, you pick less. It's that easy. I'm already looking to Tuesday after, or Tuesday night, I should say, between the Pelicans and Lakers in that 7-8 Western Conference matchup. I'll take the more than on my guy Herb Jones at Alabama, 16.5 points, rebounds, assists. I'll also go more than on LeBron James, 26.5 points, as I think he has a big game against the Pelicans. You could take picks like mine, take picks like Meek Mill, Sugar Sean O'Malley, but prize picks, they offer weekly promotions and special offers for the biggest moments in sports as well. For new users, returning users, it is just the absolute best. So get started with prize picks today. Download the app and use code CLNS for a first supplies of match up to $100 or go into the description and comments of today's video and use code CLNS at prizepicks.com slash CLNS to get that first deposit match up to $100. All right, Jimmy Butler actually was featured on Slam Magazine's online edition today. If you didn't see it, Go check out my Twitter at Nick underscore Roloff. I tweeted about it. But Jimmy had this very fun quote in here that really got me going. He said it's the time where people really got to think about going up against the Miami Heat and myself. I know what I'm capable of. I know what my squad is capable of. And don't nobody want to see us in a seven-game series anyways. We know that. I am fired the fuck up. I don't care. I know I've had a tweet that went out in the last week, and I'm not deleting it. I'm not a guy that will go delete tweets. I don't. I leave them up. 
if you want to come over me with the cold take suppose you can but when jimmy butler makes these claims i know it doesn't work for us all the time because we haven't won a ring in the last four years with jimmy butler but his leadership his accountability and his way to inspire his teammates inspires me and when he sends out these quotes i get absolutely amped up I am fired up for this game on Wednesday. I'm fired up for this run that Miami is about to go on in the postseason. And there is nobody in the NBA, there is nobody in sports that I would rather have as the leader of my team than Jimmy Butler. I'm fired up. You better be fired up too. Number two on my heat must-dos, you have to play DeLon Wright. As I alluded to earlier when I outlined my 10-man rotation I would go with if I was the head coach of Miami against the Philadelphia 76ers. And it's not because of his elite offense. That is, that's not it. It's because of what he brings defensively and how Miami will need him defending Tyrese Maxey. When you look at what DeLon Wright has done for Miami in the last five games, he has tallied 12 steals. That is more than two a game, folks, if you can't do the math. And his net rating is 27.1. That's plus 27.1. Yes, I know we played the Toronto Raptors twice and those two games were blowouts, so those numbers might be inflated. But DeLon Wright's impact has been felt. And when he made a couple threes against the Raptors on uh, Sunday, that only shows that if he's able to space the floor and just make one of two or even one of three threes in a game, he's going to be such a value to the squad because of his defense and his offense. And yeah, this number is probably definitely inflated and diluted because the fact when DeLon Wright plays as many minutes as he does, it's most likely because the Heat have already blown out their opponent. But a 9-1 record when DeLon is playing 17-plus games, yeah, that or 17-plus minutes, I should say, yeah, that will do. And if I'm not going to say DeLon should play 17-plus minutes on Wednesday. That is not what I'm saying. I think 8 to 12 minutes in relief off the bench is probably what should do the trick. But what he can do in those 8 to 12 minutes is slow down Tyrese Maxey, and I think he is actually your best chance at doing so. There is no stopping Tyrese Maxey. He's a heck of a basketball player, and he has been fantastic all year long, which is why he was an NBA All-Star. But the issue I have is that he has cooked you for three out of the four games you have played against him. There was that first game of the season on Christmas, no Joel Embiid in that one, where he had 12 points on 4 of 12, 20 shooting, 1 of 8 from 3, and the Sixers caught that out. But the three games following that disaster class for Tyrese Maxey on that holiday, well, they've been nothing short of spectacular, having 30-plus points in all three of those games, going 2-1 and one in those stretches. And sure, there was a couple inefficient games in there, like 11 of 24. Like, you'll live with that shooting percentage if you're Miami. But the one game he shot above 50%. Then the other one that happened just a week and a half ago on Thursday was a dominating performance where him and Embiid combined for damn near 70 points. He shot above 50% from the field. Like, you have to contain Tyrese Maxey. And no, do I think DeLon Wright is going to stop him and hold him to his first stat line? No, but I do think he'll be able to make things difficult on Tyrese and not let him get into a comfort zone early in this ball game and let him really get things cooking into the second half. We will be live for the Heat 76ers game on Wednesday night, so make sure you subscribe and join us for that watch party. Myself will have a producer for the first time all year long in Tyler Smith, so come check it out as we're going to provide the best atmosphere on YouTube. If you're not at the game... The best place to watch it is with us here at the Heat Report. So subscribe and join us on Wednesday night. All right, number three on my two do's, you have to work your way to the free throw line. And this should not come as to any surprise for Miami because this is when they are at their best. Jimmy Butler getting 10 plus free throw attempts a game. Bam Adebayo getting the line seven plus times as well. But this is a very important statistic for Miami as I deep dove into this matchup. In the 46 wins that Miami has this season, the Heat averaged 23.6 free throw attempts a night, and they hold their opponents to 19.2 free throw attempts. So when the Heat win games, they average four more free throw attempts a contest. In their losses, they shoot 20 free throw attempts, and their opponents shoot 19.3. So what should be your takeaway here? Well, in the 46 wins Miami had this year, they outshot their opponents on average four at the free throw line. In the losses, which there were 36 of them, 
They did not shoot more than one free throw on average a game. So it is very important for Miami to work their way to the free throw line, put pressure on the rim for the Sixers, and put pressure on the officials to make these calls. And if Miami holds the free throw advantage in this ball game, and say shoots 24, 25 free throws, and Philly is only held to about 20, I think there's a good chance Miami will win this game. So scale your confidence for me in this game. Will the Heat beat the Sixers? Yes or no. But if you were to give a 1 through 10 meter of how confident you are in Miami taking home this game against Philly on Wednesday, let me know what it is down below. Final thing I want to talk about is passing. And this is something Miami struggles with quite a bit, actually, in the regular season, is that they get over pass happy and pass open good looks. There are times where this team is in transition on a three on two or a two on one, will not take a shot they should be, and they just pass it, and then it ultimately leads to a bad shot. Whether it be Jimmy, Bam, Tyler, Terry Rozier, Duncan Robinson, I don't give a shit. If you are wide open, take the damn shot. There are times, and, and, and when I say it out loud, you might think to yourself, well, if they're wide open, of course they're shooting the ball. But the Heat don't do that all the time. There are multiple times throughout games where Miami will have an opportunity to take a good look. It might not be wide open, but it is an open look in NBA standards. And they pass it up in hopes of getting a better look but they ultimately turn the ball over or are forced into a shot with two or three seconds on the shot clock. That is not a better shot than the originally one they passed up. And when you get into the postseason, defenses tighten up, you have to take the best shot on each possession. I don't care if it's only eight to ten seconds in the shot clock and you want to work it down to five or six left on that 24 seconds. If you're open and you have a good look, but it's early in the shot clock, Take the damn shot because there's no guarantee that you're going to get a better one later on in the possession. And for a team that has the fifth best defensive rating for the 23-24 NBA regular season in Miami, but the 21st in offense, the defense will travel. If you can just get your 21st ranked offense closer to the 12 or top 10 offensive rating measurements, you will be just fine in the playoffs. So take the open shots because guess what? When you take open shots, your offensive rating goes up. This is a play-in game, man. It's massive. The Sixers are currently four-and-a-half-point favorites, 7 p.m. Eastern time tip. Over-under is 207-and-a-half, so Vegas is projecting a little bit of a low-scoring matchup. Like I said, we will be live for this game on Wednesday, so subscribe to the channel. I'm Nick Roloff. We'll be live, and hopefully we'll be watching a Heat victory on Wednesday. We'll be back with another video tomorrow with the injury updates on Rozier, Love, and Duncan Robinson, plus my official game prediction. So hit that sub button and see you tomorrow.